Unity is dead. All right, it's all over the news. Canonical dropped the Unity desktop along with Unity 8 and the Ubuntu Touch projects. Now, I just wanted to make this video to give you my two cents about this whole story. So let's see what's actually going on here. Basically, Mark Shuttleworth made a blog post saying that uh, Unity is a failure and they will discontinue it. More in particular, it stated that uh, the work that Canonical was doing on Unity was seen more as fragmentation rather than innovation. And this is sadly very true in my opinion. Finally, he stated that Canonical from now on will focus more on the cloud and IoT market. As for the desktop version of Ubuntu, it will switch back to GNOME with version 18.04 LTS. Now, I just want to give you my opinions on this whole story and on Unity in general. Now, I remember back in the days when I started using Linux, I was using Ubuntu, I think it was version 10.04, and I was switching back and forth from Ubuntu to Mint, and I remember that in 2011, when Unity 11.04 came out, I immediately switched back to Linux Mint. And, and it was because of how bad the Unity desktop was. Starting from the very first version, Unity has always been a failure in my eyes. Even the newer versions are not really that better and fail to deliver a good user experience for a Linux desktop user. Now, to, the reason for this is that Unity is based on Compiz. And Compiz, if you don't know what it is, it's a compositor that used to be popular in the old GNOME 2 days, but Canonical shouldn't have implemented the whole desktop environment on top of it. In fact, Unity has always suffered of poor performance and dependencies problem. You know, recent versions of Ubuntu has always shipped with old versions of the Nautilus file manager, as well as other GNOME desktop components. This is because, particularly in the case of Nautilus, the whole desktop environment just conflicted with newer versions of the file manager. Now, if you just adapt the fact that Unity isn't easy to customize and and it doesn't even look that good by default, in my opinion, uh, well, it, it, it's kind of a really bad thing considering most of the people that switch to Linux just go for Ubuntu as their first Linux distribution. Now, let's go on and talk about Mir. Now, Mir was a really bad idea. I get they wanted to make a whole new desktop environment and Xorg wasn't probably the best option for them since it's very old and it's going to be deprecated soon, but they didn't have to make a whole desktop server from scratch. Not when Wayland was a thing. Now, as of today, the 6th of April, 2017, you can run a Wayland session of GNOME and probably many other desktop environments flawlessly with practically any graphics card, including Intel, AMD, and Nvidia graphics cards. If you adapt the fact that Mir wasn't particularly well made and didn't bring any innovative features, then yes, Mir is just fragmentation. There was no reason at all to make a new desktop server. Now, Unity 8 has been delayed so many times, it became practically a joke. I mean, it was a nice idea to make a new desktop environment based on new technologies, and I was fine with that idea, but they, cho they chose to use Qt, which is, was a good idea actually, but they decided to build their own toolkit on top of it. And this was a big fault. I mean, this toolkit is not easy to build on, it's not efficient in terms of performance, and it's not standard. Why should anyone make an Ubuntu Unity 8 application and not a GTK or Qt vanilla application? Or even an Electron app at this point? Actually, no reason. It's not even portable. You cannot bring it to any other desktop environment with ease. Frankly, it even looks ugly, and I've not seen anything about theming it, so again, bad decisions. Now, let's, let's try to talk about the good thing that can come out of this whole story. GNOME will be a lot better. So, because GNOME is going to be the default desktop environment in Ubuntu again, this means we will have more visibility for GNOME, more, more and better themes, more development, hopefully, and possibly more funds from Canonical. And let's not forget that we will probably 
have more recent packages on Ubuntu from now on, considering they do not have to maintain an old deprecated technology like Unity. Now, as my final thought, I just want to talk about convergence. It's, I mean, you cannot deny that convergence is a thing that will happen very soon. I mean, Microsoft is doing its thing with Continuum. It's not doing really well, but it's there. The Samsung Galaxy S8 just came out, including this new desktop convergence thing. And it looks promising, at least. I mean, it's still Samsung, I, I'm not too sure what they're going to do with it, but it's a sign of the market moving in the right direction. And I think and I think Canonical doesn't need to make a whole new desktop or a whole new thing to bring convergence to Linux. Now, I think that both GNOME and KDE are practically ready for convergence at this point in time. Possibly the only thing that's missing is specific apps built for phones with responsive interfaces that can adapt to a phone screen size, but that's pretty easy to implement, in my opinion. Also, they're both widely used and widely developed, and many developers work on both platforms, bringing many applications and many improvements to both of the platforms. They're also really compatible and really portable, so you can bring a phone application to the desktop and vice versa pretty easily, with no much effort. So guys, to wrap this thing up, I just think that Canonical made the right decision here. It's pretty sad to see something as big as Unity to just die like this, but there's not much we can do about it. It was already an old technology and the effort made on Unity 8 and Mirror was in the wrong direction. I hope they can get their things together and start working with standard platforms like GNOME and KDE. If they really want to bring convergence in the open source world, they can do it. They just have to invest in the right technologies. So guys, this is gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure to press the thumbs up button down there. And also remember to subscribe to my channel if you want more of this. Again, guys, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one.